Or Shalom Hebrews. Shalom Hebrews. This Israel been Israel for the Israelite brotherhood. And I want to reflect upon this. Because, you know, a lot of Hebrews don't really understand what's going on with the heritage or the history that we have. And a lot of Hebrews mostly re, re, mostly depend on Jewish myths to explain Hebrew Israelite history. And what I want to show is this, you know, because I be running across a lot of Hebrews that be spreading them Jewish myths. And they be trying to say that the Hebrews were driven from the land during the Assyrian times and they don't really know the history and I'm trying to show the Hebrews that we were driven off the land during the Babylonian wars and that it wasn't no ten lost tribes and that Eskenazi under the name of Scythian drove us off the land you know these people right here would drive us off the land and this constitute Ashkenazi right there that's who the creator sent to chase us off the land and if you read the book of Habakkuk it's around 625 BC he sent for them because of the things that we was doing on the promised land and you have to read the book of Jeremiah to understand what was happening in our last days on the promised land you know the book of jeremiah you know he gonna be the last prophet for the 99 percent that was driven uh, uh into africa you know that was driven into the sahar by those skinthian people you know that i showed you know them skinthian people would settle in the promised land but we was driven from there which is a short distance into you know what i'm saying africa and that's where we was enslaved from and i want to show that the covenant was broke during prophet jeremiah time and that we only had one chance to get right after uh after king solomon broke the covenant we will start breaking the covenant and caused us to get put on that egyptian religion by Jeroboam who he chased into Egypt and when he come out he put that Egyptian religion on us you know the kingdom was split and how we stayed on it for about 300 years to King Josiah was born and King Josiah was our last chance to get right our last chance to get right before we was driven off the land as prophecy called for and it was a prophecy causing for the hebrews to get driven off the land going all the way back to the time of prophet moses when he set the blessings and the curses out and he said that if we had got into the land and we didn't uphold our agreements to the creator how we would be driven from the land and one of the curses to uh meant to uh state that is is if you go to let me see I thought I should have had. All right. If you go to Deuteronomy 28, verse 36. 28, 36. And you will see. And you will see it says, And it shall come to pass that as the Elohim rejoiceth over you to do you good and to multiply you, so the Elohim will rejoice over you to destroy you and to bring you to naught. And ye shall be plucked from off the land whether thou goest to possess it. Now, it said that we would be plucked off the land. You know what I'm saying? Where we would, the land we would go in to possess. And that was the land of Canaan. So, was it a time when we was plucked off the land? Yes, it was during the Babylonian Wars. It was almost like 800 years from the time that Prophet Moses gave that message and the blessings and the curses to the time that we was driven off the land is about 800 years. And it happened during the Babylonian Wars. We was driven off the land because we wouldn't stop doing that Egyptian religion. And if you read the book, of Jeremiah you will see how wicked we was and we was wicked in our last days the creator wrote a letter to us 
and 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 the prophet Jeremiah read it before the people, and we were supposed to stop robbing each other, stop killing each other, stop stealing from each other, stop sleeping with, you know what I'm saying, your brothers' wives, and all kind of wicked stuff that our enemies promote. You know, we were supposed to stop doing that, and we didn't stop doing it. So the Creator, you know, sent for uh sent for the uh, Ashkenazi, the Chaldeans, to chase us up off the promised land. And this is what I want to explain to the Hebrews is that, you know, when we was driven off the promised land, you know, where did everybody go? And I'm going to show you that it was a letter sent to the Hebrews that was going to Babylon, you know, and then how the... Uh, how the prophet Jeremiah prophesied them coming back home, you know, and how they would come home, you know what I'm saying, and, and come home from Babylon, and how the Creator told them to build some houses and plant some vineyards, and, and that they would come home and have a few kids, and that they would come home, and they came home doing what's called the Persian times when the Persians defeated the Babylonians but those Hebrews that was taken to Babylon only constituted like 1% you know what I'm saying even less than 1% so where did everybody else go you know and, and, and the prophecy said that they would be driven off the land when the covenant was broken and during the Babylonian wars or the Babylonian times the covenant was broken because King Josiah was killed by the Egyptians and then they put us back on the Egyptian religion that he had cleaned up and then you know we would be on it for uh man for about till the Babylonians came which you know wasn't too long you know we was free of Egyptian religion for about 31 years during the reign of King Josiah when he cleaned up the whole kingdom the southern kingdom and the northern kingdom, the whole Israel, fulfilling the prophecies that was uh, prophesied against uh, Jeroboam. All right, I want to read this uh, about, you know, us being driven off the land and them the people that would drive us off the land. Those are the Scythians. That's Ashkenazi right there. And that's how Ashkenazi got into our heritage. Okay, if you go to Jeremiah one, you know, and it's a lot of verses saying that the creator was going to drive us off the land, and eventually we was driven off the land. You know, if you go to Jeremiah four one, if thou will return, O Israel, said the Elohim unto me, if thou will put away then abomination out of my sight, then shall thou thou not remove. You know what I'm saying? So he said that if we had uh, put away our uh, abominations and, and stopped doing the wickedness that we was doing, then, you know what I'm saying, we would, uh, we're would we going to be removed. You know what I'm saying? And, and we couldn't stop doing the wickedness, so we was removed. And as you read now, set up the standard towards Zion, retire, stay not, for I will bring evil from the north, a great destruction. The lion is come up from his ticket, and the destroyer of the Gentile is on his way. He is gone forth from his place to make thy land desolate, and thy city shall be laid waste without inhabitant. Do you see that? Without inhabitant. So that means that the land was going to be empty. So where everybody was going to be at? So, you know, either you was going to be in Africa all you was going to be that small percentage that was took in the Babylon. And that's some more with this. Because it's got to be some more verses that, you know, that back that. And then if you go to Jeremiah 7.3. He kept telling us that we're going to be driven off the land if we don't stop doing what we're doing. If we don't stop the wickedness that we're doing, that we're going to be driven off the land. He kept telling us that. All right. If you look at Jeremiah, let me see, that's going to be 7-3. Do 
This said the Elohim of hosts, the Yah of Israel, amend your ways and your doings, and now and I will cause you to dwell in this place. Meaning that if we was to stop the robbing and the killing and the stealing that we was doing among each other, he was gonna let us stay. But you know that didn't happen. So that means that we will be driven off, kicked out. You know what I'm saying? Then I will cause you to dwell in this place in the land that I gave to your forefathers forever. If we put away the other gods, if ye oppress not the stranger, the fatherless, and the widow, and shed not innocent blood in this place, neither walk after the other gods, you know what I'm saying, to your hurt. And that's what we did. We wouldn't stop doing it. We wouldn't stop doing it. After the Egyptians killed King Josiah, we went back to the Egyptian religion, to the robbing and killing and stealing. Basically, the way that this country functioned today is how we were in the past. And we was driven off the land. All right. If you go to Jeremiah 10, Jeremiah 10, that's going to be 10, 10, 18. For this said the Elohim, Behold, I will sling out the inhabitants of the land at this once. Will I distress them, and they shall find it so. For this said the Elohim, Behold, I will sling out the inhabitants of the land at this once. So then everybody was going to get kicked out. You know, and if you read the book of Jeremiah, you'll see how wicked we was. Oh man, we did a lot of wicked stuff to him when he kept... Telling us that the land gonna be destroyed. The land gonna be destroyed. We was all gathered together. One of the uh, priests was slapped Prophet Jeremiah. They would lock him up. And we didn't want to hear how we would be driven off the land. We didn't want to hear how we would be driven off the land. You know, we didn't want nobody telling us that. And it came to pass. During the Babylonian Wars, we was eventually driven off the land. Okay, let's look at some more of these verses got to be some more all right what's this 9 11. all right i will make jerusalem heaps in a den of dragons and i will make the cities of judah desolate without an inhibitant without an inhibitant can you understand it that mean that the land was gonna be empty empty of hebrews no Hebrew Israelites from the tribe of Judah or Israel would be in the land and that it would be empty. Okay, so, you know, I'm going to prove that that happened. All right, so then if you go to Jeremiah 26, 9. 26, 9. We're going to see what it is. Jeremiah 26 All right, why has thou you know what I'm saying this is us telling prophet Jeremiah you know what I'm saying why have he why has thou prophesied in the name of the Elohim saying this shall uh, this house shall be like Silo and this city shall be desolate without an inhabitant and all the people were gathered against Jeremiah in the house you know so we didn't want to hear that we didn't want to hear how the land will be empty of Hebrews. You know, this, like I say, this is after King Josiah was killed. And then I'm going to show you how, you know, we eventually ran into Africa, you know, because the Babylonians had came and then they had shot Jerusalem up. You know, they still got arrowheads. You know, they found arrowheads from the Babylonian captivity. They finding them all the time. You know what I'm saying? You could walk out your door over there and probably still find some of them because they shot so many at us. They shot so many at us trying to drive us up off the land. And that's going to be them people that came from the north. You know, the creator called them from the north. And if you look what the north is, you're going to see that the north men of us ain't nothing but, you know, the uh, the Paragans, the Cimarrons, the Scythians, all, all those are Ashkenazi related people. And those are the people that came from the north that the Creator told the prophet Jeremiah to go call from the beginning. And not only did the prophet Jeremiah call him, but the prophet Hobuck called him 
and told and told us in detail what they would be like and how furious and evil that they would be like. He was even sad that we would have to encounter such brutal people. But our sins on the land, I guess, required all that. You know what I'm saying? And this is what the Creator has said. Then the Elohim said unto me, this this is Jeremiah 1.14. Out of the north, an evil shall break forth upon all the inhabitants of the land. For lo, I will call all the families of the kingdom of the north, said the Elohim, and they shall come, and they shall set every one his throne at the entering of the gates of Jerusalem, and against all the walls there are round about, and against all the cities of Judah. And I will utter my judgment against them, touching on all their wickedness, who have forsaken me and have burned incense unto other gods and worshiped the works of their hands. You know, so the creator sent for them people, these people right here, to get us and to chase us off the land. And that's what the book of Jeremiah is about. And then if you get to Jeremiah 40, 43, you're going to see... You know what I'm saying? That we was actually driven off the land like the prophecies calls for. That go all the way back to Prophet Moses saying that, you know, if the covenant was broken, how we would be driven off the land. And during the Babylonian wars, the Hebrews was driven off the land. The ones that went into Africa never returned back home. We are them, the people from the transatlantic slave trade. You know, because we didn't come back to the promised land when 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 our ancestors was freed from the uh from the Babylonian captivity and when they came home because the creator said that they would come home and then they came home but us they had ran into Africa to worship the Egyptian religion we never came back home you know what I'm saying and that's like us going into Africa during the Babylonian wars you know from uh from from uh, 588 BC to the book of Malachi, you know, which is the last book, you know, when, when we went into Africa during the Babylonian Wars around by 588 BC to the book of Malachi, that's the last book. That's when the exiles come home, you know, and they didn't record us coming out of Africa being reunited with the Hebrews that the Persians had freed. The ones that the Babylonians espionized and drove into Africa, the 99% didn't come back out to be reunited with, with these Hebrews right here. You know, we didn't come back out to be reunited with the uh, exiles from Babylon, you know, because they obeyed the creator and went to Babylon like they was told. And they and it was said they would be home in 70 years. Man, they came home a little bit before then, real fast, and the Creator freed them, and they come home, and they settled in the promised land, but they didn't record the Hebrews that went into Africa, you know, because the land was empty, and if the Babylonians only took a small percentage, then where was everybody else? And the Creator see that the land would be empty, so the land had to be empty. Where did the ones go to that the Babylonians didn't take? We went into Africa, and we never returned home when the other ones came home from Babylon. When the other captives that was kidnapped and took into Babylon, when they came home, we didn't come out of Africa to be reunited with them. You know, and that's like I say, you know, the book from the book of Malachi, you know, from, from us going into Africa in 588 B.C. till the book of Malachi, Close, man, that's 168 years we would have been in Africa that, you know, no documentation, nobody knowing anything, you know, about what's happening to us in Africa. And then by the time the Greeks show up, because the exile seeing so bad, they caused the Greeks to show up in 332 B.C., us that went into Africa, you know, at the beginning, you know what I'm saying, during the Babylonian Wars, we would have been in Africa for 256 years when the Greeks show up in 332 B.C., you know. And, and them prophets right there, Prophet Ezra, Haggai, Zechariah, the sister Esther, Nehemiah, and Malachi, they didn't record us Hebrews that went into Africa to worship the Egyptian religion as coming out 
being reunited with them when they come home. You know, it was like we was two different people. It was the good figs and the bad figs. We was the bad figs. And this is what we said, you know. Man, it's a lot going on. You know, the prophet Jeremiah had got with us and caught up with us and asked us what we was going to do. And then we lied to the creator. You know, this is what we said. You know, the Babylonians had came, these folks right here, the Scythians. You know, Eskenazi came, you know, and we would abandon our heritage to the self hardy Jews that was placed in our land in 722 B.C. But check this out. Then all the captains of the forces, and Johan the son of Ker, and Zephaniah the son of Hoshea, and all the people from the least even unto the greatest came near and said unto Jeremiah the prophet, Let we beseech thee our supplication be accepted before thee and pray for us unto the Elohim thy Yah, even for all this remain. For we are left but a few of many as then eyes do behold, that the Elohim thy Yah may show us the way wherein we may walk and the thing that we may do. Look, we was already into Africa. We was like a few miles from being into Africa. And the prophet Jeremiah had caught up with us and said, hey, y'all, y'all go back to the promised land. Don't go into Africa and change your ways and do right. And, and you know what I'm saying? You'll be able to go home and the creator let the Babylonians, you know what I'm saying, not dog you out and they'll show you a little favor if you go back to the land. And we said, no, nah, man, we ain't going back to no promised land and that we're going into Africa to live because it's easier for us to live there. And that's what we said, and that's what this is about right here. That the Elohim that Yah may show us the way wherein we may walk in the thing that we may do. Then Jeremiah the prophet said unto them, I have heard you. Behold, I will pray unto the Elohim your Yah according to the words, and it shall come to pass that whatsoever thing the Elohim shall answer you, I will declare it to you. I will keep nothing back from you. Then they said to Jeremiah, This the Elohim be a true and faithful witness between us if we do not even according to all the things for which the Elohim thy Yah shall send thee to us. <sighs> that was putting that was putting a bomb to our head. When we said that, we was the uh uh we were suicidal when we said that because we said that if the creator whatever he tell the prophet Jeremiah to come back and tell us we gonna do it because we all messed up and, and we need some help and, and it'd be better for us if we believed in the creator and, and whatever he say we gonna do you know what I'm saying that's what we told the prophet Jeremiah and we said whether it be good or whether it be evil we will obey the voice of the Elohim our Yah to whom we send thee that it may be well with us when we obey the voice of the Elohim our Yah we was playing with the creator we was playing with the creator for that, so you know slavery was going to have to come down. Slavery was going to have to come down. And it come to pass after ten days that the word of the Elohim came unto Jeremiah. Then called he Johan the son of Ker and all the captains of the forces which were with him. And all the people from the least even unto the greatest. Everybody came. We was all wet, dirty, nasty, hungry. And then we came to see what prophet Jeremiah had to say. And, and and he said unto them, This said the Elohim, the Yah of Israel, unto whom ye sent me to present your supplications before him. If ye will still abide in this land, then will I build you and not pull you down. And I will plant you and not pluck you up. For I repent me of the evil that I have done unto you. Be not afraid of the king of Babylon, of whom ye are afraid. Be not afraid of him, said the Elohim, for I am with you to save you and to deliver you from his hand. And I will show mercy unto you, that he may have mercy upon you and cause you to return to your own land. But if ye say we will not dwell in this land, neither obey the voice of the Elohim, your Yah, saying no, but we will go into the land of Egypt. Egypt ain't none but the Sahara. That we will go into the land of Egypt, Egypt, where we shall see no war, nor hear the sound of the trumpet, nor have hunger or bread, and there we will dwell. 
And now therefore hear the word of the Elohim, ye remain of Judah. This said the Elohim of hosts, the Yah of Israel. If ye wholly set your faces to enter into Egypt and to go sojourn there, then shall ye, then shall come to pass that the sword which ye fear shall overtake you there in the land of Egypt. And the famine whereof ye shall be afraid of shall follow close after you there in Egypt, and there shall ye die. And we dying in this Egypt and all the famines and everything because we was to be taken to Egypt. Egypt and ship too and all them things happened to those Hebrews in Egypt would be one of the reasons why we would get away from Egypt is why we would get away from Egypt and then go into the Sahara you know a little farther from the Nile because we knew that's where all the troubles was coming from and Nebuchadnezzar even came and took Egypt over you see what I'm saying he came and took Egypt over and, and uh, we would go from here Man, from here to all these parts and get on high tail over here. You know, we would get over here in these parts. And this is where they took us, you know, doing the transatlantic slave trade from them parts. And that's what happened to us. And, and, and we had had a chance to stay on the land, but we said no. So shall it be with all the men that set their faces to enter into Egypt, sojourn there? Shall they die by the sword and by famine and by pestilence and evil and... You know what I'm saying? And then they go on to tell you that we'll be taken to the strange lands, too. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and my fury had poured forth upon the inhabitants of Jerusalem, so shall my fury be poured upon you when ye shall enter into Egypt, and ye shall be an excretion, an astonishment, a curse, and a reproach, and ye shall see this place no more. And we sure didn't. You know what I'm saying? Because the other Hebrews was brought back, you know, from Babylon, from captivity, and we didn't. That the Elohim has said concerning ye, O ye remain of Judah, go ye not into Egypt. No certainly that I have admonished you this day. You know what I'm saying? And as you read, you know what I'm saying? You will see it says, And it come to pass that when Jeremiah had made an end of speaking unto all the people all these words of the Elohim there, Yah, for which the Elohim there, Yah, had sent him to even uh, uh, to them even all these words, then spake Azariah, the son of Hoshiel, and Johan, the son of, of Ker, and all the proud men, saying unto Jeremiah, This speaketh falsely. You know what I'm saying? Man, we say, you speaking falsely. The Elohim, Yah, hath not sent thee to say, Go not into Egypt to sojourn there. So, so that's like he's saying that the Elohim didn't say go into Africa to live there. That you telling a lie, Jeremiah, that, that, that the Creator didn't say that. You know, that's what we see. You see, that the Elohim I Yah had not sent thee to say, Go not into Egypt to sojourn there. But Barash the son of Ner set thee on edge against us for to deliver us into the hand of the Chaldeans, that they might put us to death and carry us away captive to Babylon. So Johan the son of Ker and all the captains of the forces and all the people obeyed not the voice of the Elohim to dwell in the land of Judah. So, you know what I'm saying? We took off. We took off and we went into Africa. And then this is what we said. Look, the Creator sent them folks then. When we said that, that's when he sent Ashkenazi. Ashkenazi come in. That's when he sent them folks. And I got videos showing that how they had body parts. This is a nice image of them. And, and how they had body parts from folks that they didn't kill in battle as trophies tied to their horses and how did they would ride down on you with animal skins and everything and how you would think it was animals on animals coming to get you and, and, and it was a total nightmare and if you know how them folks vicious and evil today just imagine how they was then when it was no restraint on their evilness when they had the full green light to be as evil and wicked as they wanted towards us well, they was that way, and they drove us up off the land. And if you read Lamentations, man, he'll tell you how sorry and pitiful we was leaving. Wet, nasty, and dirty with some beasts behind us trying to chase us, chasing us up off the land. And then this is what we said, and the Creator said that the land would be empty. If you go to Jeremiah chapter 44, 
verse 2. This said the Elohim of hosts, the Yah of Israel, ye have seen all the evil that I have brought upon Jerusalem and upon all the cities of Judah. And behold, this day they are a desolation, and no man dwelleth therein. It was empty, and it was empty. And then this is what we said, men to save face. You know, if you go to Jeremiah chapter 44, we was in Egypt. You know what I'm saying? We had been chased off by them folks right there. They done chased us out. Then we get into the door of Egypt. And then this is what we say. Then all the men which knew that their wives had burnt incense unto other gods, and all the women that stood by a great multitude, even all the people that dwelled in the land of Egypt, and Pathros answered Jeremiah, saying, as for the word that thou hast spoken unto us in the name of the Elohim, we will not hearken unto thee, but we will certainly do so whatever thing go forth out of our own mouth to burn incense unto the queen of heaven and to pour out drink offerings unto her as we have done. We and our fathers, our kings, our princes in the cities of Judah and in the streets of Jerusalem. For then had we plenty of food and were well and saw no evil. But since we left off to burn incense unto the queen of heaven and to pour out drink offerings unto her, we have wanted all things and have been consumed by the sword and by famine. We see it because the Babylonians was coming to get us is because we wasn't in Africa worshiping their religion. Well, we had plenty of food and plenty of water. So we was all messed up. So, you know, I show you how we had strong connection to the Egyptians. But this is what we have to do. We have to go back to the prophet uh, 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 Jeremiah when he was around doing King Josiah time. So he seen us having a chance to clean up and how we was cleaned up and how we didn't stay on the law. So he was a witness from when we was cleaned up to when we fell back into sin and he made his proclamations when we was into the sin and we couldn't come up out of it and we was destroyed and we was driven into africa into this slavery that we in today but if you look and read this you'll see how he was around in king josiah's time the word of jeremiah the son of halakai the priest that were in enough in the in the land of benjamin to whom the the word of the Elohim came in the days of, of Josiah, the son of Ammon, king of Judah, in the thirteenth year of his reign. It also came in the days of Jehoiakim, the son of Josiah, king of Judah, and unto the end of the eleventh year of Zedekiah, the son of Josiah, king of Judah, unto the carrying away of Jerusalem captive in the fifth month. So he was around from when we was cleaned up and to when... When the 99% went into Africa and that 1% was took into Babylon. But let's go back and, and read some of King Josiah history because this was our chance right here. This was our only chance to be right was doing his ring. And, and if we would have stayed right doing his ring, then we wouldn't have never been enslaved. Slavery couldn't have never came down, but them Egyptians tricked us. And I got videos showing how the Egyptians tricked us. You know, if, if you go to Jeremiah, I, I mean, not Jeremiah, Chronicles, Chronicles, we're going to read Chronicles, uh, 2 Kings 22 instead of Chronicles 34. I think 2 Kings 22 give you a little more in-depth detail about King Josiah. You know, that was the man. You know what I'm saying? All right. Josiah was eight years old when he began to ring, and he ringed thirty and one years in Jerusalem. And his mother's name was Jedia, the daughter of Adia of Buscot. And he did that which was right in the sight of the Elohim, and walked in all the ways of David his father, and turned not to the right hand or to the left. And it come to pass in the eighth, eighteenth year of, of King Josiah that the king sent Shaphan, the son of uh, Azela and the son of Mishalim, the scribe, to the house of Yah, saying, Go up to Helakai, the high priest, that that's going to be prophet Jeremiah, our father, that he may sum the silver which brought into the house of the Elohim, which the keepers of the door have gathered of the people, and let them deliver it into the hand of the doers of the work that have oversighted the house of the Elohim, and let them give it to the 
doers of the work which is in the house of the Elohim to repair the breach of the house unto the carpenters and the builders and the masons and to buy timber and hew stone to repair. Howbeit there was no reckoning made with the sum of the money that was delivered unto the hand of because they dealt faithfully. And Halakai the high priest said unto Shaphan the scribe, I have found the book of the law in the house of the Elohim. And Halakai gave the book to Shaphan, and he read it. And Shaphan the scribe came to the king, and brought the king word again, and said, Thy servant hath gathered the money that was found in the house, and have delivered it unto the hand of them that do the work, that have oversighted the house of the Elohim. And Shaphan the scribe showed the king, saying, Halakai the priest had delivered me a book and Shaphan read it before the king. So, you know, we didn't know the law. We didn't know the law like we were supposed to and King Josiah was still doing the will of the creator. It was a miracle because he was born out of prophecy going all the way back to Jeroboam days about 300 years before he was born and he didn't even have the book and he was still fulfilling the will of the creator. But the book was delivered to him. All right, and the king commanded Halakai the priest and a Hakim the son of Shaphan and Akabar the son of Mishkiah and Shaphan the scribe and Isaiah a servant of the king saying, "Go ye require the Elohim for me and for the people and for all Judah concerning the words of this book that is found. For great is the wrath of the Elohim that is kindled against us because of our fathers have not hearkened to the word of this book." To do according unto all that which is written concerning us. So he didn't read the book and he didn't discover that we was in some real danger. And, and that we was living in error. And he had to do something immediately to save us. So Halakai the priest and Akim and Akabar and Shaphan and Isaiah went unto Huda. The prophetess, the wife of Shalom, the son of Tegva, the son of Haraz, keeper of the wardrobe. Now she dwelled in Jerusalem in the college, and they communed with her. And she said unto them, This said the Elohim of Israel, Tell the man that sent ye you to me. This said the Elohim, Behold, I will bring evil upon this place, and upon the inhabitants thereof, even all the words, the book, all the words of the book which the king have read, because they have forsaken me and have burnt incense unto other gods, that they may provoke me to anger with the works of their hands. Therefore my wrath shall be kindled against them, and it shall not be quenched. But the king of Judah, which sent ye to inquire of this, shall you say, you know what I'm saying, touching all the head, because ye have heard, you know what I'm saying, but, but, but the Egyptians would get him, and he said that the creator, you know, wouldn't let him witness it. And tender before, and when he heard us what I have spake against this place and against the inhibitors thereof, they have, they should become a desolation and a curse, and has rent their their clothes and wept before me. I also have heard thee. Therefore will I gather thee unto thy fathers, and thou shalt be gathered unto thy grave in peace. And then I shall not see all the evil which I shall bring upon this place. And, and, and they brought the king the word. See, but the Egyptians would come get him. So, you know, the, the evil force will come get him. And the king sent, and they gathered unto him all the elders of Judah and of Jerusalem. And the king went up into the house of the Elohim, and all the men of Judah, and all the inhabitants of Jerusalem with him, and the priests, and the prophets, and all the people, both small and great. And he read in their ears, and all the word, the book of the covenant, which was found in the house of the Elohim. And the king stood by a pillar and made a covenant before the Elohim to walk after the Elohim and to keep his commandments and his testimonies and his statutes, which with all his heart and with all his soul and to perform the words of the covenant that were written in this book. And all the people stood to the covenant. You see what I'm saying? So we were selling our faith then because soon as the Egyptians killed him, we would go back to Egyptian religion. So we had to be kicked up off the land and, and, and driven off. And the king commanded Halakai the high priest and the priest of the second order and the keeper of the door to bring forth out of the temple of the Elohim all the vessels that were made for Baal and for the grove and for all and, and the host of heaven. And he burnt them without Jerusalem in the fields of Kedron and carried the ashes of them to Bethel. And he put down the idolaters. You see, Bethel is controlled by the northern kingdom. And he put down the idolaters, priests, 
whom the king of Judah had ordained to burn incense in the high places in the cities of Judah and the places round about Jerusalem, them also that burnt incense unto Baal and the sun and the moon and the planets and all the hosts of heaven. That's going to be that zodiac astrology stuff. That zodiac stuff. Them Amorites will be prevalent with that because we never drove the Amorites out. And then I can show you how the Amorites were still there. And then an important branch, a real important branch of the Amorites called the Sepharvims were placed in Samaria. So they will be influencing all this. And he brought out the grove from the house of the Elohim out of Jerusalem unto the brook Kedron and burned it at the brook Kedron and stomped it to small powder and cast the powder thereof up on the graves of the people uh, and the children of the people. And he broke down the houses of the Sodomites. So he was getting rid of the gay folks too. The Sodomites that were by the house of the Elohim where the women wove hangings for the groves and he brought all the priests out of the cities of judah and defiled the high places where the priests had burnt incense from Geba to beersheba and break down the high places of the gates that were in the inner of the gates of joshua the governor of the city which were on the men's left hand at the gate of the city nevertheless the priests of the high places came not up to the altar of the Elohim in Jerusalem, but they did eat the living bread among their brethren. And he defiled Topat, which is in the valley of the children of Hanan. That's where them Amorites gonna be doing them abortions. That no man might make his son or daughter to pass through the fire to Molech. And he took away the horses that the king of Judah had given to sun worship at the entering of the house of the Elohim at the chambers of Nathan Molech, the chamberlain which was in the suburbs and burnt chariots of the sun with fire and the altars that were on the top of the upper chamber of Ahaz which the king of Judah had made in the altars which Manasseh that's going to be his grandfather had made in the two courts of the house of the Elohim did the king beat down and break them down from thence and cast the dust of them into the brook Kedra in the high place that were before Jerusalem which were on the right hand of the mount of, of of the corruption which Solomon the king of Israel had made built for Ashtaroth the abomination of the Zidonians the Chilmush the abomination of the Moabites and for the Malcolm the abomination of the children of Ammon did the king defiled and he break in pieces the images and cut down the groves and filled their places with the bones of men moreover the altar that was at Bethel and the high place which Jeroboam the son of Nebet who made Israel to sin had made both that altar in the high places he break down and burnt the high place and stomped it small to powder and burnt the grove and as you know what I'm saying King Josiah was burning them all out he was burning them out he wasn't sparing none of them and as Josiah turned himself he spied the spatula that were there in the mountain sent and took the bones out of the spatula and burnt them upon the altar and polluted it according to the word of the Elohim which the man of Yah had proclaimed who proclaimed these words. So he was getting rid of them Sepharvims set up because the Sepharvims had set them places in order in the northern kingdom during the Assyrian times. And I'm going to show this how they went and got the priests and set them in order. So Jerobe, uh, uh, Jeroboam order was ran by them Amorite uh, uh, Sephardi Jews, the Sepharvims. And King Josiah cleaned it up and, and put that mess out and, and got rid of that mess. All right. Then he said, what? All right. And King Josiah turned himself and spied the spatula that were there on the mount and sin and took the bones out of the spatula and burned them up on the altar and polluted them according to the word which the man of Yah had proclaimed, who proclaimed these words. Then he said, what title is that I see? And the men of this city told him, it is the spatula of the man of Yah, which came from Judah and proclaimed these things that thou hast done against the altar of Bethel. And, and he said, let him alone. Let no man move his bones. So they let his bones alone with the bones of the prophets that come out of Samaria. And all the house also of the high places that were in the cities of Samaria, which the king of Israel had made to provoke the Elohim to anger. Josiah took away and did to them according to all the acts that had been done in Bethel. And he slew all the priests of the high places that were there upon the altar and burnt men's bones. So he was killing them Sepharvims, those Sephardi Jews. 
He was killing them. You see what I'm saying? He killed some of them. And I'm going to show this. And the king commanded all the people saying, Keep the Passover unto the Elohim your Yah as it is written in the book of the covenant. Surely there was not holding such a Passover from the days of the judges that judged Israel, nor in all the days of the kings of Israel, nor the kings of Judah. But in the 18th year, King Josiah, wherein the Passover was held in, in the Elohim in Jerusalem. Moreover, the workers with familiar spirits and the wizards and the images and the idols and all the abomination that was spied in the land of Judah and in Jerusalem did Josiah put away that he might perform the words of the law which were written in the book of Halakai, the priest found in the house of the Elohim. And like unto him was there no king before him that turned to the Elohim with all his heart and with all his soul and with all his might according to all the law of Moses. Neither after him arose there any like him. Notwithstanding the Elohim turned not from his furious of the great wrath wherewith his anger was kindled against Judah because all the provocation that Manasseh had provoked him wherewith. And, and the Elohim said, I will remove Judah also out of my sight as I have removed Israel and I will cast off the city Jerusalem which I have chosen in the house of which I said my name shall be called there. You know, and now the rest of the acts of Josiah and all that he did, are they not written in the books of the Chronicles of the Kings of Judah? In his days, Pharaoh Necho, king of Egypt, went up against the king of Assyria. They was partners. This was during the satire history. And when the Assyrians had put the Egyptian Mishwish on the throne and was trying to get us to help them. And then after King Josiah and cleaned the land up, and then the Egyptians want to come across it. And he wasn't having that. So the Egyptians going to kill him. Alright. In, in, in his days, Pharaoh Necho, king of Egypt, went up against king of Assyria to uh, River Euphrates. And King Josiah went against him. And he slew him at Midiga when he seen him. You know what I'm saying? So he then killed King Josiah. You know what I'm saying? And then put his son on the throne. Old evil, wicked Necho. I don't want to see See if I got an image of Necho right here. He will kill King Josiah after he cleaned up that Egyptian, that Egyptian, Amorite, Babylonian religion. All those religions that was in the land, King Josiah cleaned up. And then that dude right there, that statue of Necho that's in New York, he would come kill King Josiah. Because King Josiah didn't want him coming across the promised land after he done cleaned it up. And, uh... That would cause out enslavement. But if you read Chronicles 30, it's going to tell you how he cleaned the whole Israel up and then came home. But first, I'm going to show you some of those priests that, you know, he had got rid of and how they was of them other folks. You know what I'm saying? And if you look at 2 Kings chapter 17, verse 24. And the king of Assyria brought men from Babylon and from Cutter and from Ava and from Hamath and from Sepharavim and placed them in the cities of Samaria instead of the children of Israel. And they possessed Samaria and dwelt in the cities thereof. And so it was at the beginning of their dwelling that they feared not the Elohim. Therefore the Elohim sent lions among them which slew some of them. Wherefore they spake to the king of Assyria saying the nations which thou hast removed and placed in the cities of Samaria know not the manner of the God of the land. Therefore he had sent lions among them and behold they slayed them because they know not the manner of the God. Then the king of Assyria commanded saying carry this one of the priests whom ye brought thence and let him go and dwell there and let him teach them the manner of the God of the land. Then one of the priests whom they carried away from Samaria came and dwelt in Bethel and taught them how they should fear the Elohim. So them going to be some some people and some priests not correct, connected to Jerusalem and the Most High, but going to be connected to Jeroboam and those Amorite uh, uh, Sip Hardies would uh, uh, influence them and have them as their priests. And this is in 722 B.C., so, you know, a hundred some years later, when King Josiah come around, you know, I mean, I mean, about 130 years later, when he come around, then it's going to be a whole bunch of them. And he going to get rid of them. You see what I'm saying? He going to get rid of them. And that's what he did. 
So they feared the Elohim and made unto themselves of the lowest of them priests of the high places, which sacrificed for them in the houses of the high places. So that's going to be that place in, in Bethel and also uh, uh, in Samaria. All right. They feared the Elohim and served their own gods after the manner of the nations whom they carried away. You know, so them folks, you know, they would follow what they had in the northern kingdom. And, and here's a prophecy. Here's a prophecy about King Josiah cleaning up the whole Jeroboam religion. Uh, and, and that whole Jeroboam wickedness uh, uh, during Solomon times. After Solomon death and and, and Jeroboam come on. And, and this is in 931 B.C. This is 300 years before King Josiah was born. And behold, there came a man of Yah out of Judah by the word of the Elohim unto Bethel. And Jeroboam stood by the altar to burn incense. And he cried against the altar in the word of the Elohim and said, O oh, altar, altar, this said the Elohim. Behold, a child shall be born unto the house of David, Josiah by name. Upon thee shall he offer the priests of the high places that burn incense upon thee, and men's bones shall be burnt upon thee. And Prophet Jos uh, uh, King Josiah did that. He fulfilled that prophecy, as I've showed. You know, and we was on the Egyptian religion. When the Egyptians killed him, they put us back on the Egyptian religion, and then we would, you know, run into Africa. We would run into Africa trying to get away. From the Scythians, and then that's how the land would be uh, uh, made desolate, and, 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 and we would be driven off the land during the Babylonian War, and we would be driven into Africa. And I'm gonna go read some more of King Josiah. If you go to Second uh, Chronicles 34, and then you're gonna see that King Josiah, you know, cleaned up the whole Israel. Josiah was eight years old when he began to reign, and he reigned in Jerusalem one and thirty years, and he did that which was right in the sight of the Elohim, and walked in the ways of David his father, and declined neither to the right hand nor to the left, but in the eighth year of his reign, while he was yet young, he began to seek after the Yah of David his father. In the twelfth year he be began to purge Judah and Jerusalem from the high places, in the groves, the carved images, in the molten images. Remember, Prophet Jeremiah came the next year after that. And they break down the altars of Balaam in his presence and the images that were on high above them. He cut down in the groves in the carved images and the molten images. He break in pieces and made dust of them and stowed it upon the graves of them that had sacrificed them unto them. And he burnt the bones of the priests upon their altars and cleansed Judah and Jerusalem. So did he in the cities of Manasseh Ephraim and Simon, even unto Napatali with their mattocks round about. And when he had broken down the altars and the groves and had beaten the graven images into powder and cut down all the idols throughout all the land of Israel, he returned to Jerusalem. See what I'm saying? And then they go on to tell you how he interacted with, with, with the Israelites. And then they go to tell you how the book was found just like the other chapter, uh, 22 of uh, uh, Second Kings. So King Josiah was the man, and he would clean, clean us up before the Babylonians came. But the Egyptians would kill him, and we would go back to the Egyptian religion, which I showed. And then that would cause Ashkenazi to come and chase us up off the land, fulfilling the prophecies that, you know, was prophesied long ago. That the creator would drive us up off the land, and we was driven off the land, you know, and even... Prophet Isaiah going to it. You know, I just want to shed a little light on this. You know, how we was driven into Africa. And then if you go to uh, 2 Kings, 2 Kings 25, 26, here it is right here. That's them chasing us into Africa. And all the people, both small and great, and the captains of the armies arose and came to Egypt, for they was afraid of the Chaldees. That's going to be the Chaldees right there, the Scythians. They made up the Chaldean army, and they would chase us into Africa because we couldn't stop doing the Egyptian religion, and we will remain in Africa to the transatlantic slave trade start. Shalom. This is a message from the Israelite Brotherhood. 
and, and as I have proven that the prophecy came true from what Moses said in, in those curses, how we would be driven off the land and plucked up off the land if we didn't keep the covenant, where it came to pass. And that's what the whole transatlantic slave trade has been about. Us fulfilling them prophecies, being taken to the strange land and going through all the curses that Moses spoke about. Shalom, this is a message from the Israelite Brotherhood.